Let's take a run through problem six for a multi-product CVP. So it takes that break-even analysis that we've been learning all chapter and it adds an extra quirk, which is what happens when the company sells a bunch of different products? How do I get a break-even point? Well, we're about to find out. Awesome Axes sells electric guitars. The company sells three models of guitar, the Enthusiast, the Jammer, and the Pro. Information related to next year's budget for all three models follows. Uh, there's our sales in units, sales price, variable cost. I know based on how we've done so far this chapter that I'm going to want CM per unit, which is just the sales price minus the variable cost. I don't know when I'm going to need it, but I think I'm going to need it. 200 minus 120 is 80. 500 minus 200 is 300. And 3,000 minus 800. Wow, it's fancy, is uh, 2,200. So that's just sort of a number that I expect I'm going to need. Well, spoiler alert, we are going to need it. Um, Anyway, let's continue. The company has annual fixed costs of $200,000 and a tax rate. Oh, no taxes. 25%. So we'll, we'll cope with that as well. It says compute the company's expected profit, net income, for the upcoming fiscal year. Okay, to calculate the profit, I want to construct a little income statement. So again, this is a very roughed in income statement. Sales minus variable expenses equals CM minus fixed expenses equals OI operating income uh, minus taxes equals NI net income. Okay, so I want to do that, but for this company, they got three product lines. So I'm going to do little mini income statements for the enthusiast, the jammer, the pro, and then totals. Let's get to work. This is how we'll calculate our net income. We're going to sell 600 enthusiasts at a price of $200 each. 600 times 200 is $120,000 worth of enthusiast guitars are going to be sold. How about the jammer? 350 times 500. $175,000 worth of jammers. What about the pro? 50 times 3,000. Jeez. $150,000 worth of pros are going to be sold. So my total sales here, what is this? 195. No, 295 plus 150. Uh, I think it's 345, but I don't trust myself. 120 plus 175 plus 150. I should have... Wow, I was... Wait a second. Is that right? 445? I was way off. I'm glad I didn't trust myself. I thought I had it right. 445. Our variable costs, well, again, 600 times 120. We just take the unit sold by the price. $72,000. Um... 200 times 350, that's 70,000. Oh, I, I don't trust myself anymore. 200 times 350, 70,000. It is right. Uh, for the pro, 800 times 50 is 40,000. So total here, 140, 182. Sales minus variable expenses is contribution margin, 120 minus 72, that's 48,000. 175 minus 70, that's 105,000. 150 minus 40, that's 110,000. And 445 minus 182 is 263. Can also add it across. I'm gonna just because I'm feeling shaky. I did too much math in my head there. 48 plus 105 plus 110. Got 263 both ways. A good sign. Fixed expenses are $200,000. Now we don't apply them to the various product lines. We just take fixed expenses from the total. And we end up with operating income, our income before tax, our pre-tax profit is 63 grand. We're going to take 25% of that out for taxes times 0 0.25. 15,750 comes out for taxes. And our net income, that's the number we were after here, 63,000 minus 15,750, 47,250. That is our projected profit. And that's our answer to part A. Part B does us a favor. We're about to calculate the break-even point, and in order to get break-even point, you need to know the sales mix when you have multiple products. So a lot of times in my class, I don't ask B, I just jump right on to C, and it's like, well, you have to calculate sales mix, but, but this one sort of feeds it to us. So let's calculate the sales mix, and the sales mix just means 
what percentage of my sales belong to each category. So for example, in total, I sold, or I'm planning to sell 600 plus 350 plus 50. I'm planning to sell a thousand units, right? A thousand guitars. And 60% of them are enthusiasts. 600 out of the thousand, 60% are enthusiast guitars. So again, the math is 600 divided by the total, a thousand, it's 0.6 or 60%. 35% are jammer and 5% are pro. And that of course adds up to a hundred. This is my sales mix. So we've answered part B. Uh, so again, if I were to write out the answer to part B, I'd say enthusiast 60%, jammer 35%, pro 5%. Assuming a consistent sales mix, how many units of each product type must the company sell to break even? So this uses the same formula we've been using all chapter, but there's just a slight twist. Here's our break-even unit. So it's fixed expenses, which for this company was like $200,000 divided by CM per unit. The issue is we have three different CM per units. We got 80, we got 300, and we got 2,200. How do I figure out my overall CM per unit? The answer is I take a weighted average. And what a weighted average is, is you multiply the mix by the CM per unit. So weighted average CM per unit, 60% of my uh, uh, guitars that I sell are enthusiasts and in each of those I make 80 bucks. So 60% times 80 is 48. 35% times 300 is 105. 5% times 2200, 110 add them all together. Now these numbers on their own don't mean much, but when they're added together, they do. 48 plus 105 plus 110 equals $263. On average, when a customer walks out the door, they're contributing $263 to my bottom line. Now you can see the vast majority of customers buy the enthusiast, which only contributes 80 bucks, a big chunk of them by the jammer, which contributes 300. But what's really helping my average is these pros, each one of those pro guitars contributes $2,200. So this is the weighted average contribution margin per unit. Our formula here, the math is we take our uh, fixed expenses, which were $200,000 divided by CM per unit, which is this number. This is what we're working towards. This is what's novel or new in this uh, multi-product CVP is figuring out contribution margin per unit and we've just done it. So 200 divided, 200,000 divided by 263 gives us 760.5 units. We round up, we say 761 units is what I need to sell to break even. But the question didn't ask how many total units, it asks for how many units of each product type. So I have to apply my sales mix to that number. I go, well, seven, if I sell 760 units, 60% of them are gonna be enthusiast. 35% uh, of them are gonna be jammers and 5% of them are gonna be pros. So how many of each type do I need to sell? 761 times 0.6. 456.6. So we round everything up with break evens. It's going to mean we have a slightly positive net income, but that's uh, fine. <laughs> I'm willing to live with that. Uh, so 457 for the enthusiast, 761 times 0 0.35, 267 for the jammer, and 761 times 0 0.05. 38, well, we round up 39 for the pro. Um, Okay, so that is how many units of each type that I need to sell to break even. Now it is funky to round up even when something's a 0.05, but that's just a, a challenge with uh, break even points. Um, okay, so that's what we need to sell to break even. I think we've answered part C. Part D says, assuming a consistent sales mix, if the company wishes to earn net income of $300,000, how many units of each product type must be sold? Okay, so we're, we're expecting to make income of $47,000. We're going to have to sell a lot more units than what we had planned if we want to make $300,000. What's the formula here? Well, it's our fixed expenses plus 
target operating income divided by CM per unit. Our fixed expenses still well, it was 100, I think it was 200. $200,000. Our target operating income, we don't know. Our CM per unit though is the same as it had been before. It is 263, it's that weighted average CM per unit. What's our target operating income? You might be saying, well, they gave it to us, 300,000. No, 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 that was our target net income after tax. Target operating income, we gotta figure out. If I wanna make net income of $300,000, what is my operating income? And the answer is, well, we can work backwards because we know our taxes are 20%. Here's the math. You take 300,000 divided by one minus the tax rate. Actually, our taxes are 25%, pardon me. 300,000 divided by one minus the tax rate. So 300,000 divided by 0.75, right? One minus 0 0.25, one minus 25%, oops equals 0.75. So I'm going to do 300,000 divided by one minus the tax rate, 300,000 divided by 0.75. I get 400,000. Now this strikes me as true. Now that's the number I'm going to put in my formula, but 400,000 times 0 0.25, sorry, I'm messing this up, times 0.25, that's my tax rate equals 100,000, and yeah, sure enough, 400 minus 100 equals 300. The math maths, right? The math works. Uh, okay, so our operating income needs to be 400,000. Target operating income, this is the math. 200,000 plus 400,000 divided by 263. And I get 2282. That's how many units I need to sell in order to make $400,000 in net income, 2282. But the same as I did above, I gotta say, okay, well, I'm good. I gotta sell 2282, but which 2282 do I sell? 60% of them are enthusiast, 35% of them are jammer, and 5% go to the pros. So let's uh, crunch those numbers. 2282 times 0. 0.6, 1370, we round up. 0. 0.35 times uh, 2282, 799 for the jammer. And for the pro, uh, 2282 times 0. 0.05, 114. Five, one, one, five. And there we go. That's how many units of each type I need to sell to make my target profit of $400,000. So that's my answer to part D. Part E says compute the margin of safety. Margin of safety, budgeted sales minus break even sales divided by budgeted sales. We got the budgeted sales in dollars. We got the break-even sales in units and we got the budgeted sales in dollars. So for this formula, I'm gonna take the budgeted sales in dollars just from the income statement we projected at the start. It's 445. So it's gonna be 445 minus something divided by 445. We just have to plug in this something. What is the break-even sales in dollars? And we know our break-even units. We said 761 units. Um, and in fact, we, we know the um, breakdown here is 457 units of, in, was it enthusiast, 267 of jammer and 39 of pro. Well, now we can math it out. We can say, well, my enthusiast costs, uh, the price is $200, oops. The price there is $200 and for the jammer 500 and for the pro 3000. So I just multiply by the prices. and I'll get my uh, break even sales in dollars. So it's just the units sold times the price. So 457 times 200, $91,400 sold there. 267 times 500, 133,500 there. And 39 times 3000, $117,000 there. 
my total sales here in dollars, 914 plus 133500 plus 117000 is 341900. Now it is possible to do this with CM ratios. You will get slightly different numbers because I'm rounding up twice here. I round up to get to 761, then I round up each one of these. So there are slightly different answers that are possible here. I think this is a better answer. 341,900 is my uh, break even sales in dollars. 341,900 goes in here. And let's math it out. 445. So this is what I'm planning to sell. This is what I need to sell to break even. 341,900 divide by what I'm planning to sell. And we'll get a percentage, 23.2%. So what does that tell me? It says my sales can be 23.2% worse than I expected, and I'm still going to break out even. So that's, you know, a desirable number to know. You can say your projections are off by 23%, and you're still going to be okay. All right. Thank you so much for watching as always. And if you've liked the video, I hope you don't mind hitting one of those buttons. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.